What is up, everybody, and welcome to the training dynamic ML models on iOS 15. Uh, you might a little bit get tired from the endless SwiftUI talks, so I hope this feels like a breath of uh, fresh air for you. Uh, my name is Andre. Uh, you might know me from multiple previous experiences in Mobius and projects like Coco CD. And you might wonder why do I speak English? That's because today I'm with an international guest, with a Martin Mitrevsky. Martin is a senior architect at Stream. He works on Chat SDK and apparently knows a lot about chat since he even wrote a book on conversation interfaces on iOS. So Martin, welcome to you uh, once again here on Mobius. We are happy to see you again. So how are things going? Uh, thanks, yeah, everything is uh, going great. Um, it's a pity that uh, I'm not able to join in Russia because the previous time I had uh, really amazing time in uh, this beautiful country. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's uh, good to be back online as well. So very excited to share about how you can train your dynamic machine learning models. Yeah, great. Where do you broadcast from? Uh, well, uh, I'm from Macedonia. At the moment, I'm in Skopje, the, the capital of Macedonia. But uh, I regularly live in Ohrid, uh, that's uh, another small town in Macedonia. Great. So, so the only upside not you being here is that you don't have snow because you, we already have snow <laughs> here in, in the street. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we are. I think far from snow. So yeah. 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 So <laughs> but we, I love snow. Be, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in with you. So yeah. um, you know, uh, it is crazy how machine learning uh, was considered a rocket science maybe like three to four years ago, and now basically like any developer can do a basically state-of-the-art models in a few days or sometimes even in a few clicks. Uh, what was your experiences when you got introduced to your machine learning? Was you intimidated by it and how does, did it feel to kind of like experience it for the first time? Yeah, well, at first I, I was thinking that like, is it a rocket science? Do you need a PhD to, to do something and stuff like that? And uh, yeah, of course I thought it was really complex, but uh, as time passed by and I was watching this uh, WWDC videos from Apple about Core ML, you can see how easy and simple it is uh, to, to create uh, machine learning models. And uh, basically you don't need to be a data scientist uh, to, to do this. So I'm developer, uh, don't have any formal education in data science. So it's mostly experimenting with things and you can do pretty cool things uh, without being uh, you know, machine learning engineer or data scientist. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. And we have a lot of tools as we'll see during the talk to, to make this happen. Cool. Do, do you do you use any machine learning in, on your daily job or you're mostly kind of like it's a hobby for you for a side project and stuff like that? Uh, well, yeah, at the moment uh, I'm not using it uh, at stream. So um, I've used it in some previous apps that I've worked uh, for healthcare, you know, for detecting, uh, extracting information from a document, let's say uh, from European insurance card and things like this. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have also uh, my personal apps uh, that have uh, some machine learning. Uh, so basically uh, doing some pet projects, but then they they grow into real apps and they are uh, on the app store. So yeah, I have some experience with that and it works pretty well so far. So uh, it's also pretty fast as I've mentioned to develop those, so yeah. Great, great. So uh, before you take it away, uh, I'll just add a few words before before we start the, the talk. So you know, with Martin, we'll have three milestones during the talk. And so I will keep track of your questions that, that you are welcome to ask into the chats that, that we have. And, and so you'll be able to kind of proxy the, the questions during the talk to Martin to catch up in case you, in case you miss the details. Otherwise, we will have a full-fledged discussion uh, after the uh, talk. You may answer, ask questions in both Russian and English. In case you ask it in Russian, you will use me as a neural translator to, um, uh, to the Martin. So on that note, Martin, maybe, maybe we can start? Yeah, thanks, Andre. So 
Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk about uh, tra training dynamic machine learning models on iOS 15. So first, let me introduce myself. As I've mentioned, I'm Martin from Macedonia. I'm working at Stream, uh, and I'm working on a pretty exciting new chat SDK there that we will soon share with the world. Uh, but mostly in this talk, I will uh, be talking about uh, more of the side things that I do. So in my spare time, I uh, blog, and this is my blog, martinmitrevsky.com, where I write about new iOS technologies, uh, some patterns and everything, and uh, doing uh, demo projects, uh, and then trying to, to make apps from them. So I also have uh, several apps on the App Store. Um, those are here listed. and. Uh, yeah, I've uh, also a few years ago, I published a book with Apres about uh, developing conversational interfaces for iOS. And basically, that was the topic of my previous talk uh, at uh, Mobius when I was in Russia. And uh, you can find me at Twitter uh, by this handle at Mitrevsky. Okay, so let's get started. Um, as we go by, uh, the app stores are getting really crowded. There are a lot of apps going on, and uh, it's really hard to uh, make your app stand out because there is a lot of competition. And with that, the expectations of the users are growing. So they expect uh, a lot of your app. So they expect uh, an amazing app experience. Everything should work flawlessly. Everything should be with an easy and clear design. Uh, then they expect uh, the app to be personalized. So for example, uh, to learn based on their actions. So for example, if you are building, a, I don't know, a food ordering app, and if you order every Friday a pizza, you would expect your app to remind you that, hey, this, this is Friday and uh, do you want to order pizza? Or if you listen to some kind of a music, you expect them to get uh, similar music recommendations um, as you go by. Uh, that also comes with simplicity. So apps should be simple. They should uh, just, you know, uh, recommend things, get out of the way and uh, make the users do their job. Of course, stability is also very important. The apps shouldn't crash or anything. Uh, so uh, that's also the part of the user experience and expectations. And lately, we also have this uh, trend of uh, privacy and security. So this is another topic that's quite important, uh, especially for developing on Apple platforms. And um, users expect their data to be kept secure uh, on the device. And of course, uh, privacy is important. Uh, it should be transparent uh, with who their data is shared and stuff like that. And at the end, the apps exist to make the users more productive, or in the case of games, uh, not productive. Uh, and uh, in general, yeah, we should all try to uh, do our best to uh, make these uh, user expectations satisfied. So one of the things that uh, can help us in achieving this goal is definitely machine learning. So machine learning, uh, is a subset of artificial intelligence which uh, deals with uh, data. So uh, it tries to learn from data. It tries to identify some patterns. Basically, it expects uh, some input, and then it does some kind of uh, mathematical calculations based on uh, some parameters that we have set up or some model that, that we have trained. And uh, it returns some output. And basically, uh, this output is then uh, presented to the user in many forms, either recommendation or uh, something like uh, an image or maybe detecting a part of an image and stuff like that. And uh, it's became becoming very popular these days, especially uh, because, uh, as we've mentioned in the intro, it's uh, not really hard uh, to, to get started with this. So you don't have to be a machine learning engineer or uh, have a PhD in something. So uh, it's basically very simple to, to get started. 
Uh, the first uh, thing that uh, machine learning was introduced was uh, basically on the server. So um, this means that uh, everything is uh, handled on the server. So we have uh, machine learning uh, algorithm uh, deployed somewhere uh, and then the mobile apps would communicate uh, via, let's say, HTTP and send requests and then uh, get responses. So all of the hard work is done on the cloud. And this has uh, many benefits. Uh, so for example, uh, you collect all this data available. So uh, all the actions that the users do, you can collect them and then you gather more data and then you uh, try to uh, improve your machine learning models and so on, uh, which makes it also easier to, to uh, update them and to improve the, the quality. And also for the mobile apps, it's very simple because you do it on one place and then they just uh, send the, the requests and uh, receive responses. Um, however, um, it's not everything perfect. So this is kind of like an expensive infrastructure. So if you have especially a lot of users, there is a uh, very big computing power uh, that will need to retrain this data, learn uh, every time. And then of course, every request is again, something that uh, introduces a cost, you will need to maintain it. And if you think about it also from a user's perspective, you, uh, the users would need a network connection uh, to use your app. And if this is some critical feature that uh, needs to work offline, that might be a bit tricky. And uh, also if you go into the direction of uh, collecting data, especially on the backend, you have a lot of uh, regulations like GDPR and other privacy regulations. You need to make sure that the data is uh, stored securely, encrypted and everything else. So again, it introduces more complexity and more costs. But uh, yeah, when you have the, the data, that's uh, good, I guess, for you as a business, but uh, then for the users, uh, it might not be uh, because they need uh, transparency about uh, where this data is used. On the other hand, we have uh, machine learning on the device, which is uh, becoming increasingly popular in the last few years, especially because the big players like uh, Apple and Google introduce a lot of frameworks, a lot of tools uh, that make uh, everything easier for, for developers to get started. And here we have uh, a simpler infrastructure, so we don't have any server. I mean, for this use case, uh, you don't need uh, any server uh, and you don't need network connection, which uh, allows your app to be used offline. And then you don't have this other uh, privacy GDPR uh, regulations uh, problem because all the data is stored on the device and uh, the user can easily delete it. Uh, if you don't send it in the background, of course, um, uh, to the backend. And uh, another thing is that uh, you can easily do a personalized experience as we will see later on uh, without uh, communicating to the backend and only using the user's input uh, as a personalization, so not other users' uh, actions. And uh, those are the, the good things, uh, but uh, not everything is perfect as well here. So there are pros and cons with uh, both approaches. And uh, one of them is uh, it's harder to, to update uh, machine learning models uh, because um, you need to take into consideration the, the user input, and then uh, you need somehow to, to store again on some kind of a storage uh, these ML models and do from time to time some updates, but uh, you don't really have enough data for training. So uh, you, if you keep everything locally on the device, uh, it's a bit harder to, to improve the, the models. And the biggest con, I think it's 
uh, kind of it looks cheaper because you don't have the server infrastructure, but uh, then all the heavy lifting happens on the mobile device. And uh, basically this means that um, you would need to implement everything uh, on all platforms. So if you have an iOS app, you need to implement it on iOS and then something similar on Android. And uh, since these technologies are uh, all from Apple that we are going to discuss, they're not available on, on Android. So you will need to use uh, something different for, for the different platforms. So there are many pros and cons. So uh, I don't know, Andre, what's your experience with this? Uh, have you uh, had interaction with both ways of, of doing these uh, things, uh, so either on the on the device and on the cloud. Yep. Actually, uh, while on, on while I was on my last project, we went from the cloud to the uh, to the uh, on device processing. Uh, for our use case, it was a huge benefit. Like we saved literally millions of dollars in GPU time on servers. It's, this is especially kind of like an important thing to take uh, in mind, given the crypto boom. So everybody is hunting over GPUs. Our GPUs are very expensive now, and GPUs are what what's mostly used for the for the machine learning models inferences. And then sometimes you just cannot do it on server. For example, if you have like a real time stream and you want to 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 give user a real time um, preview, it's just basically impossible to do it on server. You can of course stream like with a 5G, but but that's not like, it's we are not there as in, in, an industry. But as you said, like I completely agree, it's, it's really hard to pick, but that sometimes some models aren't basically not portable to device, like, you know, GPT-3 or Clip or anything that is trained on like 16 GPUs and server, you cannot just, you know, put in a create ML and then port it to, uh, to, to device. So you, you really have to kind of like be accurate on how do you, how do you pick what, what, what what's your way to, to, to integrate the machine learning model in your application. So I, I, I don't see any uh, questions on this part so far. So I guess we can continue on. Cool. Thanks for sharing your experiences. Uh, so let's proceed. Um, let's uh, see how machine learning on iOS uh, works uh, and what are the tools uh, available to, to do this. Uh, so uh, the one that's, I guess, the most important uh, is uh, Core ML. So basically, this is the main machine learning uh, framework. Uh, it introduces this uh, ML model format uh, that Andre just mentioned. And uh, basically, you can uh, just drag and drop uh, a generated uh, model and uh, Xcode will generate uh, interface to, to interact with this. So it will generate the code to, to interact with uh, with the model. Uh, it also provides a lot of uh, things like uh, pre-trained models for, uh, for example, style transfer that we'll discuss in this talk and many other things like uh, helper uh, functions, multi-dimensional arrays. So it's quite a large uh, framework and uh, there are many interesting things there. Uh, then we have uh, vision as its subset, mostly uh, dealing with the visual things. So, for example, if you want to detect rectangles on an image or if you want to do some basic uh, image classification, image similarity, object detection and stuff like this, uh, these are all part of the vision framework um, and uh, it allows you to build uh, uh, how would I put it, uh, visually smart apps uh, that will uh, allow you to uh, do some pretty cool things with the, with the uh, device's camera. Uh, then uh, initially when um, CoreML was introduced, it came with uh, CoreML tools, which are uh, some Python scripts. And um, these scripts basically uh, allow you to take a machine learning model developed on some other platform and uh, then convert it to this uh, format for iOS, so the CoreML format. And um, 
Uh, then uh, over time, as, as the time passed, uh, Apple provided more sophisticated uh, methods for creating machine learning models. So first uh, we could create uh, ML models in Swift with the playgrounds. And afterwards, there was uh, the Create ML app, which uh, first it was available on macOS. We'll see it shortly in action. And then uh, with this uh, edition of iOS 15, we also have Create ML uh, available on iOS, which uh, basically means that we are now able to train dynamic machine learning models directly on the device. So that opens up a lot of very exciting use cases and uh, ways to, to interact with uh, machine learning on iOS. Uh, then from the other uh, tools, uh, there is also to recreate that Apple also bought a few years ago that also provides a visual interface for, for creating uh, some machine learning models. So you can also check it out and, and play with it. And of course, Apple provides some low level uh, frameworks like uh, Accelerate and uh, you can do all those things, uh, you know, uh, on a more low level uh, if you need some more advanced things uh, and so on. And uh, then we also have the third party solutions. So uh, some of the other big players not related to Apple uh, still provide iOS SDKs, of course, for uh, their machine learning solutions. Uh, so, for example, we have uh, ML Kit from uh, Firebase, which uh, is an SDK that also works uh, offline for some parts, so not everything. And it can be easily integrated uh, on both iOS and Android apps. So, uh, this is the one that I've used in the past for. Uh, for uh, text detection, so extracting the text and then afterwards recognizing uh, a text. Uh, then also IBM has uh, Watson, TensorFlow, there was TensorFlow for Swift as well. So basically a lot uh, of things are happening in this area. And you have other options than the ones that uh, we are going to be discussing today. So uh, create ML app, I've mentioned it uh, briefly. Uh, basically, this is uh, first the macOS app that I'm going to be talking about. And uh, this one provides a lot of possibilities to create uh, machine learning models, or if we are exact, uh, there are 13 different uh, templates that uh, will help you to create your own machine learning uh, models. So uh, the first one is about image classification. Basically, that one uh, allows us to find out if something is present in an image. So for example, if you are building an app about pets and you want to know if there is a dog on the picture, you provide a bunch of images uh, with dogs and they are uh, and then uh, the model trains uh, this, and when it sees, again, a dog in a new image that the user provides, it will tell you that there is a, a dog. And uh, one step further is object detection, which allows you to uh, specify uh, places where is the dog. And then when you try to uh, classify it, it will give you, you know, like a rectangle uh, about the position of your object. And uh, you can then either put some bounding boxes um, and stuff like this. Uh, then we have the style transfer, which is uh, something that we'll discuss in a separate slide. And then you can do all things with uh, hands like uh, detecting a hand pose or uh, hand actions, activity classifications, uh, then you can do sound classification, and of course, a lot of cool things with uh, text analysis. And uh, all of these uh, are not available on iOS, so only uh, these uh, six, so less than a half of the 
uh, all templates uh, from the macOS app are available on iOS. So those are image and text classification, uh, the hint uh, action and pose classification, as well as sound classification and style transfer. So uh, we've mentioned style transfer. Let's see what it is. So I guess you've all used uh, Instagram or a similar app in the past where you uh, create an image, you uh, enter it via the, the camera or, or something or from your photo album, and then you have a list of uh, filters. And when you apply a filter, it basically applies the style of, of that uh, image that's on the filter to your image. And um, this is based on uh, convolutional neural networks, but uh, as uh, we've discussed at the beginning, so we'll not uh, deep dive into these topics. It's important to know that there is some ML magic uh, happening behind. And uh, basically you can see uh, on the pictures here um, that uh, this image from uh, Bruce, I believe, uh, if you apply this uh, painting, it uh, becomes, you know, like a mix of uh, of those two. So it keeps the the content of the first image, but it applies the the style from the second image. And uh, this is pretty interesting because uh, it opens up use cases. So not only uh, for image filtering apps uh, like Instagram, but also for um, creating artificial artwork. So uh, for example, you can create a bunch of NFTs with uh, uh, different filters. Um, that, that's quite popular today. So uh, yeah, it's uh, an interesting uh, concept. So uh, let's see our uh, showcase. Uh, as mentioned uh, three years ago, uh, I was uh, speaking at the uh, Mobius conference in St. Petersburg. And um, this is a, a photo of uh, that uh, conference. Uh, and uh, since this conference is in Moscow, uh, I also had a chance to, to visit Moscow during my previous visit and uh, took some really nice pictures uh, of, from St. Basil's Cathedral on the Red Square. Uh, so, uh, for example, we can use uh, that one for, for our filter. Um, and then also the other one from the bottom is from, from a street near the, the center with a lot of lights and uh, yeah, a beautiful uh, picture. So uh, if we analyze uh, the first one, uh, you can see uh, I deliberately picked this one because uh, you can see how there is lighting from, from the moon. So this one is taken at uh, night. And uh, then you have some dark area and then you have uh, the cathedral. And basically we want to apply this style to uh, my speaker uh, image. And uh, when, when we combine those two with this uh, ML stuff, uh, this is an example of what we might get on the right. So as you can see uh, behind me, we have this style from the moon. So it comes like, you know, a lighting uh, behind me. And then if we go to the uh, top left corner, we have the dark elements from, from the sky. And then uh, these red elements from the cathedral are somewhere uh, in the below the laptop. Um, and basically there are millions ways of how this can turn out. We'll see that uh, in CreateML, but you can see that uh, the style of uh, the second picture, the one in the middle, is applied uh, to the style of the to the original image that uh, that I've uh, created. And uh, similarly, if we go back to the uh, second uh, photo, uh, you see a lot of light there, so small lights. And uh, if you apply the style on, on uh, my speaker photo, you will see that uh, it has uh, like a small dots. Uh, so basically that style is transferred uh, to, to the photo. 
And this one is more like a stronger style. You see that uh, more content of the image is lost. So uh, it's uh, less diverging with uh, from the original image. OK, so uh, let's quickly see how we can do things like this. So we'll go first with uh, create ML uh, model creation, uh, just to show you how to use the app. And then we will see how this works on iOS. So uh, this is the create ML app. It's available from Xcode. And uh, basically, you uh, create a new project, and then you enter a name, and you are in this uh, uh, screen here. And uh, here you create, this is your project, and here you create your models. And uh, you press the plus button and you have a new uh, model uh, that you need to work on, basically, to train it. And here, uh, let's see what we need to provide as an input. So we have first the training style image. And uh, this is basically the, the style image uh, that uh, we need. So in our case, uh, that would be uh, our uh, image from the cathedral. And uh, we want uh, this style to be applied to, to the other images. And as the training goes, we want to see uh, how everything works. So we want to see the progress, and we need some kind of a validation image. So in our case, there's the speaker image that uh, we have. So uh, basically, uh, these two are the same ones from the example. And then we need to provide uh, content images. So I will just uh, drop this here and explain it uh, in a bit. So the content images are basically uh, uh, something that's used in the, in the training of the model. And, uh, it's uh, best uh, to provide uh, images uh, with expectations uh, how your users will use the app. So if you are building an app for uh, food, styling your food, for example, then it's better to provide uh, more images with food, but also some others for diversity. And uh, if you're building something like uh, an app for landscapes filtering, uh, then it's better idea to, to put more content images uh, in that area. So this is all the data that we need for training. And then we need to uh, set up some parameters. So uh, here, a uh, use case uh, is uh, whether we want this for image or a video. So we'll go with image, but you can use a video. And actually, as uh, Andre mentioned uh, before, uh, doing a video, uh, applying ML to a video, it's much easier on the device and much cheaper as well. So uh, if you want, for example, to create an app that filters your videos uh, real time, then you can select uh, this one. And these models are available from iOS 11. Uh, but the feature, the other feature that uh, I'm going to show you is from iOS 15 onwards. And then here, uh, from other parameters, we have um, the number of iterations. So uh, 500 is, uh, I guess, the sweet spot, uh, the default one. Uh, if you do too little iter iterations, then uh, you might not have the style enough applied to the image, so it might not look good. And if you do it too much, it might uh, introduce more content loss. So basically, you need to find the real balance and uh, iterate on those until you are happy with the solution. And uh, you can also play with the uh, style strength. So how much uh, the style should be present in the image. Um, so as you saw in the examples, we went uh, with some medium uh, style. So not uh, everything was really uh, pushed into the uh, styled image, but it was somewhere in, in, in the middle. And of course, how dense you want the, the style to be. And then you press the, the play button, and that's it. Uh, so I will not do this because it starts training on the machine, and basically it will uh, block the the uh, 
my Mac, I guess, uh, and it usually is around uh, 10 to 15 uh, minutes uh, of work. And then you have uh, something like this. So I've already trained one. So we can have a look at it. Uh, if we go here in the training section, you can see some data of how the training went. So uh, you you can see the final image, but if you find something while training, let's say here after the uh, 200 iterations, let's say, you can take a snapshot and uh, basically, or even stop the training and say, okay, I'm satisfied with this uh, style and then uh, export the, the core ML model from there. Uh, and here you can see stats about how much style was lost. Uh, so at the beginning, the, the style loss is big because it still learns, the, the machine learning model learns how to apply the style. But then after this point, uh, after some, I don't know, uh, 50 iterations, then it's somewhere like this, uh, consistent. And then uh, if we go uh, how many, how much of the content was lost, uh, then you can see that uh, after again some 50, 60 iterations, it's more stable. And basically, up from this point upwards, it's up to you to decide which one works for for you the best. And then here you can add more preview images to test this, so you can see how it looks when you apply different filters. And at the end, uh, you have the output area and. Uh, here uh, you get some information about the model. So you see it's uh, over six megabytes. Uh, and um, this one actually it's available from iOS 13. And uh, here you can send some metadata if you like. You have some information about uh, the algorithm and the uh, uh, style strength and density that we have set up. And uh, then we have uh, the image uh, as an input. So it tells us what this model expects as an input. So it expects uh, an image from uh, the size of uh, 512 uh, pixels, both width and height. And then it gives you as a result a stylized image uh, with the same size. And then uh, you just need to either get it like this and you have an ML model, and then you just drag and drop it. So we'll uh, show it in, in Xcode later on to see uh, how these things look like. Or you can share it via some something like email or stuff, or you can directly integrate it in Xcode. And basically from model creation side, uh, that's everything that uh, we need to do in order to uh, have this, uh, filters so uh, but have in mind that uh, these are uh, predefined filters and need to be pre-bundled with the app and then you release it on the app store and uh, if you want to update it either you you can do it via some up update mechanism on some storage where you keep the the models or you can do it uh, via new app update so here are some screenshots of the process uh, I have here uh, uh, one from the middle, so somewhere around 140 iterations. And you can see that uh, it's a bit different from the end result. Um, and uh, even more noticeable is uh, the iteration after 380 images. And you can see this one is a bit lighter and uh, it doesn't have the uh, you know, the uh, yellow thing from, from the moon, uh, but it's more like a, a bluish uh, color. So basically this style is applied to, to this photo. Uh, so as I've mentioned, you can export this easily and then integrating in an app is quite straightforward, but we'll do this together with the other model that uh, we will uh, create via an iOS application. So uh, several uh, things about what we did here. 
uh, one uh, important thing is that the training was not done on an actual iOS device, but it was done with the Mac app and then integrated in an iOS app. And then that app is published on the App Store and then users can use this predefined model, which is kind of not really updatable. So uh, you can't, for example, allow users to uh, create their own styling with their own image. So this is the style that we as app developers have chosen. And uh, that's it, the users will need to use it. So basically pretty much like Instagram does it at the moment, you have a lot of filters and you use those. But if you want a custom filter, then uh, you can't really do it. And uh, if you want to, for example, change a filter, then you need uh, internet connection uh, to, to update this. And uh, there was no like personalization moment. It was not like I as a user want to use this image as a filter, but uh, the app developer has uh, decided that uh, this filter is uh, used. So uh, this is the create ML app uh, on macOS. So before we proceed uh, with the iOS part, um, let's take a step back. So um, yeah, Andre, what's your experiences? Have you used create ML so far? Um, no, I actually I actually didn't. I, I, I am more of a you know classic PyTorch TensorFlow type of, type of developer. Another thing okay. that, that you I guess missing on the uh, on the list is ML compute. It's a thing that always goes off the radars. This is the framework that Apple introduced like in 2020. Uh, yeah. It's it's very it's very unpopular because it's it is kind of a full fledged alternative to PyTorch and TensorFlow. But since nobody uses Max for machine learning, basically no nobody uses like I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but 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 it's still still important to to keep it on the radar because with the emergence of M1 and stuff things can change i wanted to ask you like you mentioned that um, uh, the training takes a lot uh, about 10 15 minutes on your machine so can you share the yep. specs so so it's so the audience can better benchmark like is, is it on a top spec machine 15 minutes or uh well uh, yeah so it's not like uh, it's a top machine so it's not m1 um it's a uh, from those makes from 2019 and uh, it's i7 and I believe it's, it was 2.4 uh, gigahertz. So it's not like state of the art newest thing. So uh, it's just a regular uh, MacBook from two years ago. And I have another one uh, which is M1, but uh, you know this uh, uh, basic ones. So with uh, eight gigabytes of RAM and actually the timing was pretty close. So uh, this one has 16 megabytes of RAM and that one has twice less the M1 that I have. And uh, roughly the, the training was uh, the same on both. And you can imagine on a pretty solid uh, M1 uh, how this would go. So I guess it would be a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And have you tried like other uh, other applications of CreateML, like not style transfer, does it take longer or comparable times, like with object detection and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, in the past, uh, I've uh, trained other models, like for image classification. Uh, I think for image classification, it was seven, eight minutes, something like that, if I recall correctly. Uh, and object detection, it was around the 10 minutes area. So it's roughly in these areas, uh, the training. So it's it has never been less than, let's say, five, six minutes. Mm -hmm. Got it. And that's the model that come out of the CreateML introduce any restrictions, like, for example, for the resolution of, or the size for the image, where you can basically fit it like anything that, that you want. Uh, no, so that's uh, one uh, restriction. So uh, this model that comes from uh, from CreateML has fixed size, so there was uh, no way in the CreateML app to to specify this. So it uh, falls back to this uh, 512 uh, resolution, which means if you want again something more advanced with custom uh, resolutions, then 
you will need to uh, dig deeper, like in a lower level to, to implement this. Hmm. All right. Okay. Well, that's uh, understandable. Well, so we are heading to the key part of the talk, right? So iOS, create a map. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's see uh, how we can do this on iOS. So uh, this has some benefits, as we'll see, like everything else, it's a trade off, but um, the, uh, the training here is done on the device dynamically. So what this means as uh, users is that you can just upload your uh, own photo and uh, basically you can use it as a style filter. Uh, and then again, you don't need internet connection uh, to do this and you can do personalization on the go. So uh, based on the user's input, you can uh, train and customize things. And we'll see also other use cases how you can do this. So uh, to show this, uh, I will share uh, now an iPad and uh, show you uh, the app uh, that uh, I've used this feature on. So it's called uh, Dimi. And uh, basically, it's available on the App Store. And uh, you can do the same thing that I've shown uh, via uh the make uh, app so i have the same picture here uh so as andre also pointed out um, this is with fixed uh resolution so the ratio is one to one and uh basically that's why we have this uh place where we can adjust the image so we need first to prepare the input before we can um uh set it up for, for styling. So I uh, am happy with this. So I will go here. And now we are in the screen, which is kind of like uh, Instagram. So there are at the bottom uh, many filters and every one of them is predefined except the first one. So uh, this one Moscow is created via the app and uh, all the others are, are uh, pre-bundled. So they are done the same way as we have seen before with the Create ML app. And uh, how to do this? So uh, we can create our own filters by this button, Add Filter. And uh, let's say I want, uh, actually, I think you will understand this as well. Uh, and then I can, pick a photo and let's say this one. And here I can basically set up all the other things. So here for, for the user's perspective, I have uh, I didn't go into the direction of specifying iterations because that's like too complex for users uh, that are not developers. So basically you have a creation mode, which can be uh, fast, like less than a half a minute, then few minutes so this is more iterations and this accurate is uh six seven minutes but again it's not with 500 iterations but i think it was somewhere uh in the area of uh 200 ish uh, iterations so basically after this um uh, uh style and content loss stops then this is the the sweet spot and then you can also play with the style strength so if I create the filter, it will start uh, creation of the model in the background. But uh, again, I've already uh, created one. And uh, you can see that uh, it applied, again, uh, the style of, of the Moscow filter. But uh, it's a bit different because uh, we've uh, specified a different number of iterations, so less iterations. And uh, basically, this is uh, what I, I'll be showing you how to do uh, in code uh, from this point on. And uh, basically, then I will just switch another filter. So let's say to see that uh, the styling is fast. So you can see like uh, when you have a model created, it uh, does the prediction in uh, one or two seconds. And even if we stress test it, so if I press this uh, quick look, it will generate all the combinations uh, from all of the filters. So you can uh, pick your ones that uh, you need the most. 
Uh, and you can see that this is fast. So uh, when it works on the device, it's uh, pretty efficient. And basically, this is the part where it allows you to uh, create, you know, different combinations of art, like uh, non-fungible tokens and stuff. Uh, okay, so that's the app, and uh, let's see how to build this. Uh, so there are several steps that we need to do. Uh, the first one is uh, the one where we take the user photo. We prepare it by uh, having this uh, uh, picker of, of which part of the photo we have in order to satisfy the, the size. Uh, then we also need to pick the, the style image. So uh, when we were creating the filter, we also had a pick of the which image we want. Uh, then we need to set up the local content directory with images. So basically, this is the same thing when we drag and dropped those test uh, images, 25 images. But you can basically pre-bundle those uh, in the app. So you just need to pick 25 images, and that's it. Then we need to uh, set up parameters for training. Uh, and these are uh, things like uh, we've seen the style uh, strength, then how many iterations and stuff like this. And then you create a training job. So this is something that comes from uh, create ML. And this is um, of type ML job. And the cool thing about this is that this is a combined publisher and uh, you can subscribe to, to updates, so you can track the progress. So it uh, uh, allows you to, you know, present some UI about the percentage of uh, how far the model is uh, with creation, and then you save the created model on the device. Uh, finally, let's see some code. So uh, this method is the the same one. So I will show you also in Xcode all the methods that I've used for, for this feature. Uh, so this method creates a training job. Uh, and you can see that it takes uh, as parameters uh, the URL of, of the style image, the one that we've picked with uh, Moscow. Uh, then we have the, the training mode. So basically, this was whether it's fast or slow uh, from the UI, and then some additional parameters like the style strength and so on. Uh, and uh, then first, we need to create uh, the data source of the style transfer. So this first line, uh, let data equals uh, and so on. And here we provide the style image URL, uh, the content directory, the one with the 25 images. And uh, a processing option, we want uh, scale fit because we uh, care about the ratio of the images. Uh, then we create a session. So basically, everything that the training does is written on a file locally on the device, a temporary file. And then uh, that file after the training is uh, done, it's deleted. Um, and it's useful if you want, I guess, to see what's going wrong or uh, if it failed and stuff like this. Uh, and then you create the session parameters uh, with this URL and the number of iterations and you start the training. And this uh, ML style transfer dot train returns uh, the job that uh, basically you need. And um, when you have this job in your views or view models or however you uh, structure your app, you can easily listen for updates. So this job has a progress publisher, and this progress publisher is for a uh, fraction completed. And of course, here is a good idea to put uh, everything on the main thread because you would probably want to update your UI. And this is called whenever there is a progress. Uh, and uh, Basically, here you just update the, the progress, and this is how the users know that I'm 5, 10%, or 100% done with the training. And then we also have a result publisher, which uh, is called when you finish training. And this is your place to do 
uh, storing of the model. So you want to save it somewhere locally on the file system uh, and uh, then associate it with some kind of a filter, uh, if you like. So that's what I'm doing here because I keep the filter uh, struct separately of the, of the ML model itself. Uh, because uh, if we load all 20 something filters in memory as machine learning models, then the app will crash. So that's why this filter struct is like a helper uh, struct that keeps only the file URL to the uh, machine learning model. And then when the user picks this filter, then we load the machine learning model. And after uh, they finish, the user finishes, we just uh, release it from memory because uh, we don't want to uh, have memory issues uh, with the app. Uh, then uh, since we can't really see it in action, uh, training time depends on number of iterations. So less iterations would uh, finish of course sooner, but uh, the style would be a bit of a lower quality or the style won't be applied that much to the photo. So that might mean even a more beautiful picture. So uh, it doesn't mean that uh, having less iterations would have a lower quality, but just an image which has uh, bigger uh, content and style loss. Uh, of course, training is uh, slower on the device. So it's not like uh, you can put 500 iterations. I think I haven't really even tried this, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it would be, I guess, uh, slower than, than the Mac. Uh, and here, uh, another uh, thing to consider is to have some background tasks for longer filtering uh, trainings, but uh, have in mind that also those can be killed at any time. So uh, that's why you have this session URL to see what's happening uh, and maybe retry the, the process when the user comes back. And another thing, you've already seen it in action, when you have the trained model, uh, doing the predictions or applying the style was uh, pretty fast. So that's the thing that mobile experiences allow. And if you do this, for example, on the backend, it's kind of uh, depends on many other factors like uh, slow connection and so on. Uh, and how does this thing look uh, in code? So uh, this is the, the method that does the actual style. Uh, so here I've just uh, first create the, the image to the correct size. Um, actually the image buffer. And then I'm just wrapping this uh, in the new Swift concurrency async await uh, just for easier usage. So here you can use pretty much anything you like. So you can use uh, combined publishers, you can use, uh, I don't know, futures, uh, you can use any other callbacks, async mechanism. Uh, and what happens here? So here, uh, in this method, we create a feature provider and we say that uh, our input would be uh, the image buffer. And then we load the model because it's not in memory. And then we just uh, run the uh, model prediction. And then we uh, uh, try to do the, the prediction uh, from the image. Uh, and then, uh, we just extract the feature value for the stylized image and uh, basically that's it. So uh, yeah, I've already discussed about uh, these things uh, and using it is quite simple. So you just say, uh, of course you can, uh, it's up to you how you want to structure this. Uh, async await was my way of choice. Uh, and you just call target image equals and then you try to uh, apply a style filter. Uh, the takeaways about this, so uh, the good parts, straightforward implementation, you don't need to know ML knowledge. So as you've seen, we only saw code and some clicking around uh, in the create ML app. Uh, you don't need to maintain server infrastructures and then you have a uh, personalized user experience. So the users uh, themselves can uh, do this by uh, uploading their own image. 
Uh, the not so good parts, uh, the app size grows with uh, every model creation. So if you add a lot of uh, custom filters, of course, this will add six, seven more megabytes with each training. Uh, there is no support on other platforms such as Android, so you will need to figure out a different way. Uh, you don't have insights to the user's data because you can't really uh, uh, know what's happening on the device. And another thing that's for us developers a bit hard is that at this moment, at least, CreateML is not available on the iOS simulator which makes it a bit harder for development, especially if you have CI processes and you need to do some can import uh, tricks to, to enable this. Uh, so uh, since we are uh, slowly finishing up with time, uh, just some things how this works in production. So around 5% of the users of the app use the custom filter feature. I guess it's a lower percentage because it's harder for regular users. And of course, it's also a premium feature, so it's not a, a free uh, part of the app. And uh, most users are using the, the predefined filters because that's easier for them. And uh, for uh, using such features like this, it's best to focus on experiences that require uh, no user effort, like building uh, music recommendations, for example, or pizza recommendations. So uh, I have here a link to my blog post about uh, how you can uh, create uh, music albums recommendations. So based on uh, which uh, albums you like, then it recommends the ones that uh, you would like, I guess. Then you can use it for sound classifications, uh, hand pose classification, and uh, so on. Uh, so yeah, here are the relevant links. Uh, I guess uh, we'll not have much time for uh, another uh, milestone, uh, right, Andre? Or yep. Thank you, yeah. thank you, Martin. Um, yeah. If anybody well. um, told me that we could train models on iPhone like a few years ago, I would laugh in the face. But now it's it's a reality. So we have two <laughs> minutes. In, in case anybody have questions, uh, we can we can discuss it right now, or we can jump straight to the Zoom discussion zone. Like let's wait for a few seconds for anybody to to be able to ask questions. Okay, yeah, in any uh, case, uh, while uh, everyone uh, is asking questions or, or not, uh, then I want to thank you for, for that invite first, and then uh, thank you for listening. And yeah, if you have any questions, uh, let's catch up on Zoom. Yeah, great. It was a pleasure to, to have you here. So I think that wraps up the talk part. We'll we'll tr translate to the uh, to the discussion zone. Have a nice one. Bye bye. Yeah, enjoy. Talk to you. Bye bye.